Can we give a hand, clap of praise for Akili as she comes to do the welcome? Come on, y'all can do better than that fire, baby. Amen. Center in Kenner. The time is 3 p.m. and the cost is $25. Community will also celebrate their 2024 Women's Day on November the 17th at 8 a.m. For more information, please see the flyers on the church bulletin board. Today at 3 o'clock p.m., there will be an appreciation service for Brother Ronald Allen at the Macedonia Baptist Church located at 2810 Erada Street. Please see the flyer on the church bulletin board. Well, it's time for the birthday time. Birthday time, right? What month is this? November. What month is this? November. Oh, sound like somebody must be born this month, but you say November. All right. Acknowledging, acknowledging my first birthday, Sister Velma Fleming, November the 4th. Also on November the 4th, Sister Linda Cornelius. Brother Andrew 
Thomas, November the 19th. <laughs> Brother Nolan Braggs, November the 22nd. <laughs> Our own Brother Kedrick Cooper, November the 24th. <laughs> yes, yes. Brother Cedric Myers, November the 27th. <laughs> Brother Clarence King III on the keyboard holding down November the 27th. Sister Twyla Wise, November the 29th. And last but not least, Sister Katie Morgan, November the 29th. Is there someone we left out? Is there? Okay. Jack Crowell, Smith. Okay. I've heard this today. Oh, today? Well, happy birthday. You got a question, Sister Cooper? All right, it's my last time. <laughs> okay, first I want to do a shout out. Yesterday, there was a homecoming. It wasn't 35, so I'm coming. members who are part of Warren Easton. They will just go to the school they're active. We have Amina Watson, who's in color guard. Look at that nice smile. She like that color guard. And our own dancing doll, John Tanya, the dancing doll of Warren Easton. And I went to the Warren Easton parade, y'all. And I gotta say, I like y'all now. They gave out cups that said they're not like us. <laughs> Activities for our children, they will look elsewhere to celebrate. Yeah, right. So we had the fall festival, and it was really nice. It really was. We were blessed. We had uh, a vendor who gave us two box houses for the price of one, and the price of one was reduced. He said it was the church, he was one to help us out, right? So the children did wear costumes. I didn't tell them we were going to have a little prize, but you know we had to do that. It's just we had to do that. Because they were so cute. I think, I think that should be for children anyway, but in New Orleans, the adults take it over. So, the first acknowledgement is going to go to, we had a, we had a silly clown, y'all. It was a silly clown. Right? And I found the ribbon that said the silliest costume. So come up here, James. The silliest costume. He was a wonderful clown. All right. Next, we had. You know, I, I don't like the gruesome costumes, but we. <laughs> I mean, you know, they all right, but we had a cute, creepy costume. She came as the Purge, and then her name is Heaven. How about that? Heaven for the most. guys saw this a little bit. One of the old ladies. She was really the old lady. She had, she had the hair, the gray hair with the rolls and the cane. And uh, I guess she was somebody's grandma. But that was the fastest moving grandma I ever saw in my life. So come in, Nova. You get, you, you're going to get it for the best handmade costume and the cutest costume. All right. I 
also want to give a special thanks to all the parents that donated and participated, particularly the ones that had trunks. It was trunk or treat, y'all. And we had several trunks. Um, we had two with Hocus Pocus trunks. We had a Cookie Monster. What about the food? Had Cookie Monster uh, trunk. We had a, I had a fall trunk. My trunk was a fall trunk. I had a scarecrow and books and things. Had to tell them, them kids don't want no books and apples. Them kids took all that stuff, right? But then we had Candyland. We had Candyland. We had the witch. Nice. So that's a cute witch, though. It wasn't a bad witch. It was a cute witch. But then we had somebody that was like not playing. She was not. She wasn't. She ain't The circus trunk, y'all. She spilled all out over the whole thing. She had the trunk. Then she had the side with the billboards and the balloons and the, I was like, she, she, she went all out. She stepped the game up, okay? Come on, come on, Javante. I thought you were gonna get your award for that. Y'all said decorate. Not only did she have her trunk decorated, she, wait, would you look at her? She, she sat down like a clown as well. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can you say a couple of words? What was your motivation for picking that thing? Well, you know, every, I'm told to talk with everything. But I just enjoy the fact that uh, the kids, you know, were able to, like, come. And trunk or treat, I've never like participated or even brought my child to like a trunk or treat where he didn't have to go out and knock on doors and ask and yeah. you know, and I can trust and believe that everything coming from everybody's trunk is safe. Yes. Right. And it just was yeah. enjoyable, you know, it was just the fun. Like I kept having stuff coming through Amazon, my people like, who knows, who's next? <laughs> <laughs> and I just kept saying, What kind of books that melts in the bag? I thought it might melt that ain't up. I just enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. It was the fun about it. Why clothes chose clown? I didn't know. I, I don't know. I thought it was the most simplest, easiest, quick, straight to the point clown. You know, and, and at first they had this banner that was sold out. And it was like, I'm clowning for God. And I'm like, that's what, that's what it is. And I was like, God, every time I do it, it was sold out. I'm like, oh, all right, I'm going to have to start. October 31st, edition, edition. Oh, get ready. Girl, she's saying, like, get ready, because she's coming to the next year. Oh, yes, she will, girl. What I'm telling you for, I, I, I do not want to um, belittle this moment, but I also want to acknowledge not all decorations and costumes are snowboarding. You saw Nova was handmade, right? Well, we had one person that went out of her way. She came speed through the parking lot all fast. I was like, where is she going? You know why? Because she had to spend her time putting all that blue paper up there because she's making the cookie monster, so she wanted to be fluffy. So she did all of that. Then she had her cookies, and she put all her little cookies on top of it. Then she had cookies on her little shirt. Then she had cookies all up on the table. I said, my first lady ain't playing with y'all. We gonna get on the wall for the best creative. Because she was creative. And no, it's not a bottle of wine for you guys to give me a bottle of wine. <laughs> but thank you so much. I'm looking forward to next year. And um, I'm just really proud. Let's give up. Give it up for all of our children. That's how I do it. Amen. I know last week we didn't get a chance to acknowledge um, our fall festival, so I wanted to make sure that we had that chance to really acknowledge them this week. They did an excellent job, and our kids didn't feel like they missed out on anything. Amen. They had a wonderful time. Fun, safe, they had a great time. So 
I want to thank our youth ministry leaders. She talked a lot today, but let's give it up for Sister Setuai. Y'all have to be an amazing guy. Getting folk together. Sister Setuai is, is a person who knows how to get folk together and get them on one accord. And so I thank God for her. She's also our resident culture bearer. So um, she has been doing many things. Uh, you, uh, you, you've, reached, you've reached mama status right now, right? Grandma like, um, status. We call them mamas and babas in yep, yep. Afrocentric tradition. So she, she's mama and sets a lot to a lot of folk in the community. But I thank God for her and all of the parents. Thank you, parents, for trusting us with your, your, your children. And also thank you for just participating. A lot of folks say that the church don't have nothing going on, but the truth of the matter is a lot of folks don't participate. Amen. So when you do your little part and I do my little part, she does her little part, he does his little part. How many of y'all know great things happen when we all come together? Amen. Great things happen. Amen. So um, um, time is far spent, y'all, but um, um, we're, we're going to prepare our hearts and minds to give as God has prospered us. Uh, the Bible declares God loves a cheerful giver. The way we can do all of those things and not have fundraising for every single little thing is because we're a church that believes in giving, amen? amen. When we want to do a fall fest for the church, for our children, we don't have to do fundraisers. We just say, hey, we're going to do this, and we have that's, that's when you believe in the principle of generosity, all right? You believe in sowing. You believe in reaping. You believe in tithing. Why is that important, Pastor? Because when you give, how many of y'all know God will give it back to you? He will, he will, he will. Um, if you hold everything to yourself and you give nothing to God, how many of y'all know nothing from nothing leaves nothing? See how my hand is held like this, tight? Nothing can get out. But it also means nothing can get in as well. Y'all listen, I know it's November and we're close to the end of the year, but I need God to bless me, amen. I need anybody else need God to come through for you, amen. So I, I can't afford not to tithe. I can't afford not to give. I can't afford not to trust God with what he's given me, amen. Uh, we have a few different ways to give here at our church. You can give um, via your envelope, the traditional way. If you want an envelope, raise your hands. Our ushers will give you one. There's four hands raised. Amen. Thank God for our hands raised. No, keep your hands raised. Keep your hands raised. I also to come. If you don't have a, if you don't have an envelope and you want to give to this one, if you got one, I see you, baby. You got one. Happy birthday too. Happy birthday. She got one. Thank you, ushers. Thank you, ushers. Shout out to our ushers and our greeters who are outside. Amen. Can you give that praise to them as well? Thank God for them. Amen. Happy, happy birthday, brother Cedric. Amen. I gotta, I gotta take, uh, you, you gotta take me on a fishing trip. Now remember, before this year out, we gotta get us, you gotta teach me how to catch a redfish. I never caught a redfish. I caught, I caught a lot of cats and a lot of sheep head in my time. I even caught some trout, but I ain't never, I never catch a red yet. So. They told me I wrestle with reds. No, they said you wrestle with reds. So. I'm excited about it. She's a fisherman? Yes. Brother said, you see it right there? Brother said, raise your hand. Brother said, that's a fisherman right there. All right, y'all got to, we're going to have a little fishing competition right here, all right? Fishing competition. <laughs> all right. If, if you prefer to give digitally, you can do that as well. You can give via uh, Cash App or you can give via PayPal, whichever way you feel more comfortable. The information is on the screen. Um, and I want to thank God for our members who view us virtually every Sunday. They view us Facebook Live every Sunday. Um, even our members who go out of town and go on vacation, they can view us and worship with us. So y'all, let's give God praise for our members who are watching us virtually. If you have Facebook, I encourage you to share it. Please share the broadcast on your Facebook page. You never know. Uh, like I said, we get messages every week from people who are viewing us and who are being blessed by our broadcast. Amen. Um, aunties, uncles, family members, folk who we don't even know who just view us and so into our ministry. So we want to continue to bless them and thank God for them as well. So our virtuous viewers, our victorious viewers, they're giving as well with us as well. So if you're giving, whatever you're giving, however you're giving, we're going to lift our gifts to the Lord at this time, and we're going to go to God in prayer all over the building. Come on, let's lift our gifts to the Lord, whatever you're giving. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to tell you thank you, God. The fact that we have anything to give says that we are already blessed. 
We thank you, God, for the blessings you reign in our lives, God. We ask that as we bring the tithe into the storehouse, as we continue to bring offering into your house, God, we ask that as we take care of your house, that you will continue to take care of our house, God. Continue to open that window from heaven. Pour us out a blessing we won't have room enough to receive. God, don't just bless us, but bless us so we can be a blessing to someone else. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Church of God said amen. 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 Our demons will feel about this on today. Ministry Month, amen. Shout out to our women's ministry. They did a wonderful job in month of October, amen. This month, we're going to focus on the family. The month of November, we're going to focus on the family. So all week, um, I'm sorry, all month long, we're going to be speaking life into the family, amen. amen. We're going to be speaking life into the family. Um, Kayla, Jada, my sister, they, they want to spend some time with the young people in the back if possible. So everybody who's who's between the ages of what, I don't know what age bracket they're doing, but every young person we're going to ask who's, yeah, all the babies, all the babies, y'all stand up at this time, y'all send them to the back. Uh, we want them to learn a lesson today on their level, amen, amen, amen. How many of y'all know it's important for our children when they leave church, they ought to know what happened in church. Amen. They ought to know they to leave with something. Amen. So thank, thank God for them wanting to minister to our young people on today. Amen. Thank you, parents, for bringing them to church. I know these young people don't drive themselves. So uh, it, it takes uh, effort to, to, to bring them, to wake them up in the morning. Amen. All those things take effort. So thank you, parents, for sacrificing and bringing your children to church. 
I mentioned this during Bible study that is so, so, so very important. It's so very important that we, 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 we import some wonderful things into our children. Our children need to know who God is. Amen. amen. They know a whole lot of other stuff. Amen. But they need to know who God is. It's very important. It's very important. Amen. That's a word from the Lord on today. Luke chapter number 15 is where we're going to be at on today. If you don't mind standing quickly with me, reading God's word, Luke chapter number 15, all of you wait. Luke chapter number 15. So good, good to see so many family and friends and visitors. Amen. My big brother from my neighborhood. Dijon is in the house. Wave your hand, Dijon, so to see who you are. Amen. Thank you for coming, bro. It's my big brother. Amen. From Kingswood. Y'all don't. New Orleans East when New Orleans East was New Orleans East. Um, <laughs> good old days. Those, those are the brothers here. Terrence, all those boys back there. Carrie Shane. They're the reason that nothing happened to me. Amen. I ain't have no big brothers. Amen. I ain't have no big brothers. But the brothers in my neighborhood, they were my big brothers. Amen. They looked out for me. Marty, Michael, they, they looked out for me. So I thank God for them. So when I see them, I'm, I'm excited. Amen. Luke chapter number 15. It's a very, very familiar passage of scripture. I know you already know it if you've been to Sunday school, but we're going to read just a few verses of it. Verse 11 says, Luke chapter 15, verse 11, New Living Translation says, To illustrate the point further, Jesus told him this story. He says, a man had two sons. The younger told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. A few days later, this son packed all of his belongings and moved to a distant land where he wasted all his money in wild living. About this time, his money ran out. A great famine swept over the land and he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him and uh, the man sent him to the field to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him, but no one gave him anything. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home, even the hired servants have enough food to spare, and here I am hungry. Uh, he, he, he says, Here, here's what I'll do, here's what I'll do, here's what I'll do. He says, I will go home to my father and I will say, I have sinned against both heaven and you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. Verse 20 says, so he returned home to his father. And while he was still a long way off, watched his family, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him and kissed him. His son uh, said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But his father said to his servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house. Put it on him. Get a ring on his finger and sandals for his feet. Kill the fatted calf. Um, we must celebrate a feast. Here it is. For this son of mine was dead and has now returned alive. He was lost. But now he is found. Amen. You may be seated in God's prayer. Amen. I want to talk from this thought on today, family. Many of our young people may not resonate with this, but I want to talk about the young and the restless. We'll be talking about family all week, so I, I figure we start on today with the young and the restless. Some of my young people looking at me like, what are you talking about? But some folk who, like myself, grew up with elders in your house. You know something about the young and the restless. In my day, uh, when I was coming up uh, living and going by my grandmother's house, we could not turn the TV from Channel 4. I'm going to find out the real folk that grew up in New Orleans, you know. 4, 6, and 8. Come on, somebody help me. You, know, you couldn't turn it from Channel 4. I don't care what you wanted to watch. Channel 4 was on that thing. And I remember it like it was yesterday. We had to watch God and Lights. We had to watch, come on, somebody help me talk. We had to watch All My Children. We had to watch As the World Turns. Come on, y'all. 
Yeah, yeah, y'all remember One Life to Live, all that? Y'all listen, my favorite, I remember even that night, sometimes we used to watch in the heat of the night, some of y'all don't remember. <laughs> but but y'all, I remember my favorite out of all of them was the young and the restless. And listen, y'all, she loved me a lot. I was her, in my mind, I was her favorite grandchild. But hear me, um, it, it wasn't a whole lot of things you can do to interrupt her when she was watching the, the Young and the Restless. She used to be tuned into Drew Silla and the things that, that was happening with them. And, you, you know, you, you know uh, I found out recently that, that Victor Newman, uh, just did he recently pass away? He recently, is he still alive? Victor is a vampire church, listen. Some of y'all don't believe in vampires, but Victor is a vampire. There's no way. Y'all, listen, Victor was old when I was small. How is he still? Whatever health plan he is on, I need to be on that plan. <laughs> but, but, but those memories... Those memories last with us. And the gist of the the, the gist of the, the stories, if you will, were that these were some some dramatized stories, but they were real life examples. And if you looked at it, it was drama and drama and drama, and it reminds us sometimes of the family drama that you and I go through. Amen. If anybody got a real family, you know you've had to deal with some kind of drama. And the, do I have somebody that don't mind being real on this? First Sunday in November, we all had to deal with some kind of family drama. I, I, I know, I know you're in church and you're having a holy moment, but sometimes the people connected to you can get on your last. Amen, somebody. Seems like sometimes God knows how to get folk who have your last name, who share your bloodline, to be the very one to get under your skin like nobody else. Y'all can let them through. Y'all can let them through. We all have family drama, family issues. And y'all, this story that Jesus tells, this parable, is literally a family drama. It's a family drama. Uh, he, it, it's a story, if you will. It's, a, it's not a true story, but it's a parable. What is a parable, Pastor? A parable is a story that, 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 that resonates with us here on earth, but it has a heavenly meaning. And Jesus is telling the folk all throughout Luke chapter number 15, that he's telling them what the kingdom of heaven is like. Jesus says, here is what God is like. God is like a father who had two sons. And one day, the Bible says, the one son, the youngest, came to the father, and he says, listen, um, give me my share of my inheritance. And the father is such a loving father that here's what the father does. He divides his inheritance between his oldest son and his younger son. Y'all, this young man was the definition of being young and restless. He was restless. He, he was restless. But here's his issue. The Bible says that he, he comes to his father saying, um, uh, give me my inheritance. And y'all, if you don't understand uh, uh, Hebraic culture, you don't get the, the gist of what he's saying. What he's really saying to his father is, uh, I want my stuff now. And, and, and don't miss what I said. Give me my inheritance. Inheritance is something you get after the person is no longer here. So what the son is really saying is, Daddy, I don't need you no more. I wish you were dead so I can do things my own way. He was young, he was restless, but here's where he made a mistake. He was disrespectful. Now, now I want to tell you, family, before I jump into the lesson, I want to tell you um, that all of us in here have been restless at one point in our lives. I thought y'all was going to keep it real with me on Sunday. Because y'all, here's our problem as parents, as grandparents, as aunties, as uncles, as mentors. We think that when children get restless, something is wrong with them. No, a child's supposed to smell themselves every once in a while. Anybody know what I'm talking about here? Uh, you was raised in the house with your mama, and you at one time, you thought you was the mama. I was had a witness in here. At one time, you thought you was the daddy. Anybody know what I'm, can, can anybody admit that sometimes uh, you were restless in your own house? 
That's a natural part of, of, of growing up. That's a natural part. You're supposed to feel like a man. You're supposed to feel like a woman. Here is the problem in 2024 is that our children are consistently restless, but parents are not doing our job to remind students and remind children that even though you are restless, you got to remember your place. I wish I had, I wish I had a witness in here. All of us were restless, but we had a mama and a daddy, a grandmama, somebody who said, I know you're smelling yourself. I know you feel like you are, but listen, until you can put your name on a bill, I wish I had a witness in there, until you can park your car at your own address, you can't tell me how to write. Anybody know what I'm talking about here? Let them be restless, but when it, when it goes into disrespect, you got to learn how to shut it down. Amen, somebody. Our children, they want to crash out. They want to do different things. They want to, they, they want to chase clout. They want to do all these things. Some of y'all looking at me like, this don't know what, what I'm talking about. Listen, if you got teenagers, you better start learning some of these terms, amen? Because this is what they're talking about under your nose and what's going on. But here's what I want you to do. Here's what I want you to know. That even though you may feel like that, I got to let our children know, don't get so caught up representing a false version of yourself that you forget who you truly are. The young man, he was restless, but he forgot what he had already. Sometimes the grass can look so green out there that you forget what you got already. I wish I had somebody who could be honest in here. Anybody remember that prayer you used to pray? I can't wait till I make 18. I'm going to get out of here. You ain't going to never see me no more. I ain't going to never do this to my children. I can't believe she's punishing me. I ain't going to never whip my children like they whip me. How many of y'all know all that change once you made 18? I wish I had a church. I'm in here. You have to realize that bills keep on coming. I wish I had... Bills are more consistent than anything in the world because how many of y'all know they might forget a whole lot of stuff, but that bill gonna be on time in the mail. Y'all, y'all, I, y'all listen. I, I, I had to apologize to my parents when I got older. I had to say I'm sorry. I'm sorry for asking for new clothes and all this foolishness, and then getting the attitude when you couldn't get me the new shoes. I'm sorry because sometimes you told me no and I didn't understand. But now that I got my own, I wish I had somebody there. That can help me preach. Now that I got my own pastor, I know what it's like to rob Peter to pay Paul. I know what it's like to uh, go without so they can have what the outside the witness in there. I know what it's like to sacrifice on my end so they can look good. He's young, he's, he's, he's restless, and then he's rebellious. Here's our issue. Uh, um, 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 we we, we got to learn that that's a natural part of life, parents. It's natural for them to be rebellious. It's natural. Ain't nothing wrong with it. But, but, but you got to remind them of their place. Listen, ain't nothing wrong with the way you feel. You're supposed to feel like a man. Amen? You're supposed to want to be your own woman. That's it. It's, it's all right. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But, 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 but don't, don't, don't grow up too fast. Mama used to say, don't you rush to get it. Come on, y'all. Mama used to say, take your time. Y'all. Come on. I'm not, I, y'all older than me, right? Come on. Y'all. Y'all should know some of this. My mama used to say, listen, you got to take your time. That's some of the best advice you can give your babies. Listen, I know you don't like it right now, but just keep on living. If keep on living. He was younger. He was restless. And watch his, watch his family. Once he got what he wanted from his father, he went to a faraway country. He ran away. He ran away. He said, I'm going far away. And I don't know how far the country was, but watch this family. Any distance away from God is too far. My God today. Any any distance away from God, he goes to a far country. And the Bible says he ruined his reputation. Here's what he did. He spent everything he had. Not only did he spend everything he had, but when he was doing what he wanted to do, he was was living and doing whatever he wanted to do. Watch his family. He was partying, but eventually the music stopped. I wish a, a young person would listen to me and understand this. Some, 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 some teenage person, he, hear me. Um, if you're having good times right now, thank God for them. But how many of y'all know seasons change? I wish I had a witness again. And if you live your life uh, in a ratchet way and you uh, ruin your, uh, your, everything you have, watch what's going to happen. What's going to happen is you are going to uh, run out of everything you have and then you're going to be in need. And the Bible says here's what happens. 
He, he's, he's, he's having a good time. He's, he, he's putting them up, if you will. He's, he, he's spending uh, uh, no less than $200 at the bar. He's, he's making sure everybody has something to drink. He's making sure that his friends have enough weed to smoke. He's making sure that everybody ha have enough vapes to smoke. He's, he's, he's living ratchet. He, he, he's ruining his reputation. Don't miss this. He comes from a good family with a good father, but he forgot where he came from because he's trying to be something, Lord have mercy, that he's really not. I was somebody would understand this you don't even know the family you come from you don't even know the royal background you come stop trying to be somebody else and just thank God for what he made you and walk in who you are mm. here's what happens he ends up he leaves the house with money but the Bible says when he gets to that place when he's without his father he's without his family the Bible says he began to be in need and here's what happens. Uh, he, he, here's how people do you. You ready? Here's how people do you. The Bible says he began to be in need and nobody gave him nothing. You mean to tell me? Last week I put you up. I wish I had a witness in here. Now that I ain't got it, you can't put me up. I wish somebody who was older. Do, do, do I have a young person know what I'm talking about in here? Folk can take all they can from you, but when it's time for, for them to give to you, uh, it's always an excuse. When you needed me, I was there for you, uh, but now they ain't answering the phone. I was saying the witness in here. Somebody know what I'm talking about in here. Uh, no, he, he made sure everybody else was straight, but when he needed somebody, the Bible says he had to go to somebody and convince them uh, to hire him. I try to tell our children now, make sure that you have enough skills and, and you have enough um, gumption to be able to work for yourself. Because watch this, family. Um, there's going to come a day in your life when mama and daddy are going to close their eyes and you're going to have to depend on what he has already put in you. How many of y'all know every tub has to stand on there? Come on, somebody. Don't be talking here. Got to stand on its own bottom. Yes, God bless the child that has his own. But listen, you got to learn how to do something for yourself because if you are not prepared when your mother and father no longer are here, you're going to be in a world of trouble. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about here? This world don't owe you nothing. I wish I had a witness in there. Ain't nobody coming to give you a job. Ain't nobody coming to give you an opportunity. If you want something, you got to get up off your blessed assurance and go on. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about in here? You got to go get it yourself. He, he might not have known everything, but at least he went and, 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 and made the right decision. He, he got a job, but y'all, watch this. He got the worst job that anybody would want. Right. Here's his job. He works on a farm, if you will, and his job is not to take care of the chickens, even though chickens are disgusting. His job is not to take care of goats or sheep, even though they smell bad. No, he sent this Jewish boy to go and take care of pigs. Now, that doesn't mean nothing to you because you probably ain't baking this morning. But to a Jewish boy, you got sausage on your breath right now. Hey. Pastor, I don't know what you're talking about, pigs. I'm hungry right now. I ain't had breakfast yet. <laughs> but to a Jewish boy, that is the worst thing you can do. So imagine the people that Jesus is telling this story to, they are freaking out. They are upset. They're upset for multiplicity of reasons, but especially this reason, they are upset. They are upset because this shows that, watch this family, when you run from God and you run through your resources, eventually you're going to hit something called rock bottom. I wish I had somebody know what I'm talking about in here. Anybody ever been there before when you didn't have nothing? I mean, when you had, see, some of y'all ain't never really been broke before. When you've really been broke before, it ain't that you got zero, it's that you got negative. I wish I had. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody ever been there before? But, but when you look at saying, man, I hope that check hit so I can at least break even. I wish I had. A, I, I'm too far in the back. Come on, somebody ever been there before? Yeah, y'all, that's what he's at. He's at rock bottom. He can't call nobody else. He can't allow, he, he's so far down that he said, to himself, I'm about to eat the slop that I'm feeding the pigs. Now, anybody in here grew up on a farm? I didn't grow up on a farm. I'm a city boy. Anybody know anything about a farm? Anybody? Anybody? All right. If you, have, have you ever seen slop before? Yes. Slop is one of the most disgusting things you can ever think about. It's literally anything. It's anything they can find. It's, it's, it's not pretty. It's just a mix of anything they can find because pigs will eat just about anything. 
Can you imagine this boy pouring out this slop for the pig and looking at it because he's so hungry, saying, man, that looks good. That slop look like a, look, look, looks like a steak. And y'all, can I help you here, Zion? That's what the enemy will do to you. The devil, Lord have mercy, will show you the preview, but won't show you the ending of the movie. I wish I had a witness in here. It, the devil will always make things look better than what they really are. Do I have somebody know what I'm talking about here? The devil will make you think that it's all fun and games out here, but he won't show you. Here's what the devil will do. You ready? The devil will get you to leave God and be by yourself, and then the devil will leave you himself. I wish I had a witness in here. Leave God. Y'all, that's why I tell our young people, you better learn, if you don't know nothing else, you better learn how to stay with God. You better learn how to develop your own prayer life. You better learn how to know him for yourself. Because, listen, if, if you can't depend on nobody else, if you got God, how many of y'all know what I'm talking about in here? At least he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He hits rock bottom. He hits rock bottom. And y'all, uh, when you hit rock bottom, here's my shout. I'm about to go to my seat. When you hit rock bottom, you will realize that Jesus is the rock at the bottom. I wish I had. I'm trying to help somebody here. He's the rock of ages. The Bible says, cleft for me. Let me hide myself. In this. Here's, what, here's what you'll find out. God will allow life to knock you down low. And you may be saying, Pastor, why did the daddy give the son what he wanted? He should have just told him no. Sometimes, hear me parents, hear me sometimes when it comes to your teenage, so uh, quote unquote grown children, sometimes no ain't the right answer. Sometimes you gotta let life teach them. Y'all ain't gonna help me talk in here. How many of y'all know life is the best teacher? I'm gonna say that. You can talk to your blue in the face and your kids are gonna go, is gonna go through one ear and out the other. But if you let life teach them, they'll come back to you and say, Mama, you sure was right. Daddy, you know what you was talking about. Guess what? Just how you said it was gonna happen, that's exactly how it was happening. Y'all let life teach them sometimes. Here's my shout, I'm about to go to my seat. Here's what he says. Uh, the, the story ends by letting us know that uh, even if you're restless like this young man, even if you're living a ratchet lifestyle, even if you ran away from your father and you are rebellious, it's never too late for you to repent. Here's what he does. He's in the pig pen. He's about to eat the pig's food, the slop, and something happens, y'all. This is why it's important that you're raised in the right house. This is why it's important that you bring your children to the church because they may stray far, but they'll always come. I was saying, what is it there? They'll always come back. Something that family put in that boy had him, uh, he had a realization. Something came over him. He says, Wait a minute, I'm about to eat pig slop. But when I think back to my daddy's house, Lord have mercy. Even the servants in my father's house have three course meals. I'm saying, that. even the servants in my father's house sleep in their own bed. Uh, he says, "Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get up from where I am. I'm going to go to my father and say, Father, you ain't got to accept me as a son, but just make me one of your hired servants.' Uh, you may be saying, Pastor, it's a shame what that boy did, and yes, it is a shame. But you ought to thank God that no matter what you do in this life, you can always come back home." Do I have Somebody know that God will not turn his children away. You can always repent and make a turn. What do you mean, Pastor? Here's what he does. He remembers his father's love. He remembers his father's provision. He returns. He repents. He's humble. He's ready to face the music. And the Bible says, here's how good God is. Once you get yourself together and you're ready to come to God, it's always better than what you imagine. He thought when he got back, he was going to hear, I told you so. He thought when he got back, he was going to hear his daddy fussing at him. Y'all know how some of y'all do. Some of y'all be raising your own blood pressure, fussing at grown folk. You ain't got to say it, man. I'm looking at you right now. Just look straight. If you look straight, out, nobody won't know I'm talking about you. Yeah, children grown, grown and gone, and you still blue, fussing. Man, don't do all that. Nah, no, no, no. Don't waste time. No. No, no, you ain't got to say I told you so. They know. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm saying. They know. You ain't got to tell them. They know they're wrong. And, and y'all, what, 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 what children need when they come back home uh, is not another speech to remind them about how wrong they were. I was trying to witness in there. What they need is a parent who has love and compassion. 
a parent who says, listen, I know things ain't perfect, and I know you messed up, but, but if you can't go to nobody else, Lord have mercy, you can always come back to me. Do I have a real parent in here that can help me testify? Pastor, that's my story. You know, listen, they may say this and say that about my children, but guess what? I will never give up on, I'm a, listen, you ain't got to say man. I'm talking to somebody in this church today. You better not ever let the enemy let you give up on your child. I don't care what they did. I don't care what they smoked. I don't care where they been. The devil is alive. Now, I may show you tough love, but you can always come back home. That's a trick of the enemy. I was like, all right, let me give it to you where you can get it. How many of y'all know African American people? African American people. We are some of the only people that get rid of our own people. Yeah. Say it, man, if you don't say nothing. Yeah, you listen, Latino families, you can live at home forever. Okay. Jewish families, you can live at home forever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, folk, Middle Eastern families, they love when their children come home. Matter of fact, they want the whole family to come home. But you know what we do in the black, black African American community? As soon as you make 18, you ain't got to say, man, I know I'm preaching. I heard, I heard it when I was 14. I wish I would. My mama told me when I was 14, you got four more years. I hope you got a plan. <laughs> what you mean? I, I'm 14. What do you mean? I hope you got something ready. Oh, you got something ready? School and school and work. You know, one of them. <laughs> and listen, family, I understand partly why we do that. But watch this, family. You, you gotta learn that it's 2024 and it's rough out here. I wish I had a witness in here. And if you throw your children away and you let them go and survive for themselves, you're gonna create a generational pattern that your children are gonna create over and over again. Let me help you here. Some children ain't ready to leave home at 18. I wish I had a church up here. Some children ain't prepared to leave home at 18. And if you didn't prepare them, it ain't their fault. I wish I had a witness in here. It's your fault as a parent for not getting them ready. So don't laugh at the father. The father said sometime, if you want it, go ahead, go ahead on and get it. But, but here's what he learned. Here's what he learned. He learned that he can always go back home. Here's what happens. The Bible says he's walking home. Lord have mercy. Help me tell the story. He's walking home. And the Bible says when he's walking home, he gets up, goes back to his father. Here's my shout. Lord have mercy. The Bible says when he's a long way off. He's about a mile, two miles, three miles down the road. His father sees him. Lord have mercy. Remember what I told you? He had his speech ready. He was going to say, Daddy, I messed up. Daddy, I made a mistake. Make me a servant. But here's how good God is. If you make one step toward him, Lord have mercy, he'll come all the way. <laughs> he'll come all the way to where you are. He didn't even make it home yet, but daddy is such a good father that he ran out to meet his son. He ran out and he, he was filled with compassion. The Bible says he hugged his son. He kissed his son. And, and he, before his son could say anything, he had already shown him love. Do I have a parent in here that's made up in your mind? I'm going to do that with my children. No matter how far they stray, mama always got a hug for you. Daddy always got compassion for you. And listen, I don't care if the world says you don't get no more chances. The world didn't birth you. You are my child. Do I have a real parent in here that's made a commitment? I don't care what they say about me. I will never give up on my child. I witness this myself. I had two grandmothers who dealt with children who had substance abuse issues. And watch this. Two of, my, two of my aunties and my uncles, they had substance abuse issues. And I'll never forget that um, uh, even their old, watch this family, their old sisters and brothers gave up on them. Because y'all know when somebody is under addiction, they're having a rough time. And I don't care how saved you are, you can get sick and tired of being sick do I have somebody? Come on, keep it real. I mean, you stole from me two times. I ain't gonna let you steal from me. I wasn't. 
You lied to me four times. I ain't gonna let you lie. Come on, son. You might know what I'm talking about. Come on, keep it real over there. I don't care if you is my brother or my sister. I get sick of it, right? And y'all, I'll never forget. I'll never forget. Uh, they, they, they asked my grandmother. They said, Mama, well, why don't you well, why don't you get rid of get rid of her? Why don't you get rid of him? Because uh, uh, all they're doing is dragging you down. Here it is, you, you retired, Lord have mercy. You ought not have nobody else stressing you out, Mama. You might you might stroke out. I would say, anybody know what I'm talking about here? You might die of an early age. You and y'all, I can remember it like it was yesterday. My grandma said, baby, if you calling me about anything else, you can call me. But don't you ever in your I can't tell you what she really said, but she said, Don't you ever in your life call me and tell me how to raise my child. I wish I had some real parents up in here. And listen, family, you don't know the love that a parent has for their own child. Anybody, anybody up here can testify? If I gotta die myself, I'm gonna die for mine. I wish I had. You might not like yours, but I'm gonna die for mine. I know they're crazy, but they're mine. I know they're thrown off, but they're mine. I know they ain't right, but they're mine. Thanks be unto God, this father saw his son afar off. He said when he left here, he had on Gucci, but now he ain't got no shoes on his feet. When he left here, he had on designer, but now he's desperate. But thanks be unto God, that father can still see, that's my child. He's dirty right now, but that's my child. He smells funny, but that's my child. Is there anybody in here that can thank my God? Oh, yeah. 
son who left home, went to a faraway country, and he did all of that so you could come back home. Now listen, we done shouted about the prodigal son. Can we give God praise for the son of the living God? The Bible says he came. called his son. That's how good God is. God says, I know you messed up. Matter of fact, I knew you was going to mess up before you knew you was going to mess up. What's that? Apparently, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know your kids better than they know themselves. That's, that's modeled by the Father. He's telling you, listen, I know you're going to make some mistakes, but guess what? Come on back home. I'll restore you. I, I didn't get to all of it because I got a little bit excited, but watch this family. Not only did he restore him, but he tells, before he can get his speech together, the father tells his servants, hey, he said, I want to be a servant. He said, before you even talk about being a servant, I'm telling my servants, go get my stuff. Because I don't even want nobody to see him like this. Get my ring. Get my robe. Get my sandals. And matter of fact, go, go, go and kill the fatty calf. We about to have a party. Yes. You know why we about to have a party? Because my son, who once was dead, oh, is now alive. Oh, my son, who once was lost, oh, is now found. Yes. Listen, family, we, 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 we're really used to this, and we've seen it so many times. When folk join church and, and change their life and give God their hand and commit to walking with God for the rest of their life, the Bible says, just like in this parable, they're rejoicing and having a party. It's the same way in heaven when Amen. one person comes to salvation. Amen. It's a party going on. Yes. It's a party going on. Yes. And y'all, we got to make sure that no matter how, how long we've been saved, how long we've been members of, of, of God's church, how long we've been members of the kingdom, don't you ever forget the feeling of being saved. Amen. That's a trick of the enemy. The enemy wants you to be so callous and so cold that you are no longer sensitive to new believers. Yes, yes. That, that, you, that you become to get, you, you become to get uh, 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 callous. You become to get cold. You don't want to invite nobody to church. You think that nobody can change or that sister, she's going to always do this. That brother, he's going he's gonna to always be like that. That, that child is never going to check out. That's that's the enemy telling you that. God says if any man be in Christ, any man, any woman be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have already passed away. Behold, now all things have become new. How many of y'all know God can save anybody? God can save every listen. If, if Jesus, he's just, he's just waiting. He's saying, look, I'm giving you free will. I'm not going to tell you and make you choose me, no. 
But, but, but I'm going to tell you, the door is always open. You got a nephew, you got a niece, you got a cousin. I got him in my family. I got, I got some folk in my family who I know don't know Jesus. And I want us to think about this this week, family. We're going to open the doors of church, but I want us to think about this this week. When is the last time that you pressed upon them their need for God? Amen? Amen. Amen. When is the last time you pressed upon them? <clears throat> the only reason I'm here today is because somebody didn't give up on me. <clears throat> yeah, we got to be people who never give up on those who don't know God. Let's all stand. <clears throat> no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Jesus God, your children are coming to you praying, making a declaration that no weapon that the enemy has planned for our children, for our spouses, for our aunties, for our uncles, for our cousins, for our grandparents, for our mothers, our fathers, our children, God, the enemy cannot have our family. In the name of Jesus, we come against any attack that's already been planned. We're going to pray like never before. We're going to trust you like never before. Our children will be successful. Our family members will be saved. Our niece will be delivered. Our nephew will be changed. It is not over for our family. We know you have the last word. Right now, God, we thank you for keeping us this far. But on today, God, we commit to loving ourselves and loving our family in a more rich way in a more deep way. We need you, God, like never before. We need you like never before. We need you like never before. Give us love, God. Give us grace. Give us kindness. Help us to love each other past our failures. Help us to, keep for, to, to, to forgive when we need to forgive. Help us to let go what we need to let go of. Help us to love them past our own hurt. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do this month and the rest of our lives for our family. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Church of God said amen, 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 amen. We want to offer Christ to you on today. We want to offer this church. If you're here on today and you don't have a church home, here's what we want you to do. Just make your way forward. We're not going to embarrass you. We're not going to ask you to say anything. We just want, while we're singing this song, we want to offer Christ to you, all right? If you're here and you need salvation, here it is. No weapon. No weapon. Is there one? It's a great day to join church. Give my word.
Naliska. 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 How you doing, Naliska? That's Naliska. Thank you and your family for worshiping with us on today. Thank you. We certainly appreciate it. We certainly appreciate it. There's many churches you could have worshiped on today. You passed up a lot of churches to get to us. So I want to tell you thank you for worshiping with us. We really appreciate it. And we don't take that for granted. Amen. We don't take that for granted. Amen. Thank God for our uh, youth ministry. They had a wonderful lesson on the back shouts. This is the Kayla Tanner. Kayla is, is passionate about our young people, amen, passionate about teaching them lessons. Uh, thank you, Jada. Thank you for helping out. I, I certainly appreciate it. I know it's not easy working with kids, amen. It's not easy working with kids. I do it every day, amen. Y'all, I, I don't think y'all praying hard enough for me. I don't think y'all. <laughs> thank y'all. Listen, uh, Tuesday, anybody know what Tuesday is? Yes. Vote, vote, election day. Selection day. Selection day. Let me quick, quick question. Who all took advantage of the opportunity to early vote? Let me see your hand. All right, all right, all right, all right. You got church early, early voters, all right, all right. All right. Yeah, yeah. If you have not, it ain't too late. Tuesday, make a plan to go and vote. One of the reasons that you should early vote is because they're at certain places. And so you don't have to be in your precinct to vote. You can be at certain places. Like in where I live, there's only one spot to early vote. So everybody goes to one spot. But if you have not early voted, check your registration status, right? You only got two choices. Make a plan to go vote. Everybody like, oh, I got 100 choices. That's fine. That's great. If you think that. But listen, <laughs> I heard somebody say it this way. You can, either, you can either vote for the AKA or the KKK. <laughs> Hey, I ought to be grateful. I could have made this whole sermon about election today. I could have. <laughs> so thank you, Pastor. Somebody up here, I didn't talk. I didn't beat it down your head. But again, we only got two choices, all right? I saw a sister. I was, we were playing basketball in uh, the Lakeview area on yesterday. And I saw a sister, a white sister. Uh, she was in the coffee shop when I went to get coffee. And her shirt says, Vote as if your daughter's lives depend on it. Because it really does. She stopped me in my tracks. I said, I love that shirt. I said, great. She was with her whole family. And, and y'all, we got in that conversation. You should have saw the other folk in the coffee shop while we were talking. I said, yeah, man, y'all gonna be all right. Y'all be all right. But listen, seriously, um, y'all heard me say this many times before, so I won't belabor the point. But the right to vote is really that. It's a right. It's a right. We had to fight for this right. If you know history and you love history like myself, you know that it was only meant, first of all, for white landowners to only vote. White male landowners, they didn't even want their own wives to vote. Only white male landowners to vote. And eventually it moved, we fought again for black men to vote, all right? And again, then white women, right? Then everybody, again, these are rights that we have to fight for. And you may be saying your vote don't matter. The devil is a lie. If your vote didn't matter, why do you think we had to do all this to get the right to vote? They're gerrymandering districts. They know that if they can keep us without power, then they'll keep us right where they want us to be, all right? All right, now I'm not gonna get on, get on my soapbox in a minute because I got here, but Vote your interests. Vote your interests. You're not voting for your pastor. You got it? I'm not voting for your mama. You're not, you ain't got, I ain't gotta agree with everything you, no. Black folk, we ain't never had the candidate that we wanted to have. Amen somebody? We've always had to pick, you know, our best interests, right? Pick the person you can work with, amen? But I'm not gonna tell you who to vote for, but please do exercise your right to vote. And, for, uh, let's, off the president, listen, if you don't know who your county commissioners are, and you don't know who your school board leaders are, if you don't know the people, do that education right now so when you get there on Tuesday, you know who to vote for. Know what the amendments are, amen? amen. Let's educate ourselves, right? We protest and that's great, but let's, let's, let's be progressive on the front end, amen? All right, let's all stand, let's all stand, let's get ready to go on home. Shout out to all the November birthdays. Again, this is Family Ministry Month. So Family Ministry Month, we're going to uh, be ministering and blessing our families all month 
long. Amen. And the youth ministry have a special blessing for you guys. Remember we talked about pigs? We got some pig in the back for y'all, all right? Uh, they got some hot dogs and nachos for everybody in the back, all right? All right, so we did. I didn't even know, so. All right. And y'all, thank God for, again, our wonderful musicians. Y'all Y'all don't know how, how great they are. My son, Mason, Skyler, our cousin Clarence. He does so many different things. Pablo's out of town. He's going to surprise his brother for his birthday. And thank God for the incomparable Jada Tanner Jada. blessing us all today. Y'all know we take selfies and we have fun with each other, but let's receive our blessing and our benediction. Every head, body, every eye close. Before I pray, make sure when you leave, you pray for the saints. Amen. Every <laughs> head, body. Father God, we come to say you thank you, God. Thank you, God, for speaking into our lives on today, God. Thank you for reminding us that no matter how far we've ran away from home, we can always return back to you, God. Thank you, God, for receiving our praise, God. Thank you for answering our prayers, God. We pray that as we leave this place, whenever your presence, God, you continue to protect our families, continue to provide for us, God. Continue to make ways for not only us, but everybody connected to us, God. We thank you in advance for the ways you're going to make and the miracles you're going to wrought in our lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Church of God said, amen, amen. Come on, show somebody some love.